Welcome everyone to Gamer Melt. Today we have Intel's beast of a CPU. AMD goes over Ryzen 3D, why the 6500 XT only has 4 gigabytes, AMD does the impossible again, and Intel's Alchemist GPUs are doomed. Okay, it's news time and first up for today, Intel's new i3-12100F looks to be the fastest 4-core CPU ever. In fact, according to overclocker Lucky Noob, who tested the chip at stock clocks, the CPU beats a Ryzen 5300G that's overclocked with liquid nitrogen on Y-Cruncher by 18%. Not only that, but it gets similar performance to the 3100 clocked at 5.6 GHz on liquid nitrogen in Cinebench. Remember, the 12000 100F is its stock clocks here. Basically, if you're looking for a great budget 4-core CPU, the 12100F could be your best bet. Of course, I know the motherboards are pretty pricey right now, but remember that the B660 along with lower end boards are set to come soon. Motherboard makers were showing them off at CES, and I believe they're technically released already, but I know there aren't really any in the US. Either way, once they do fully come out, Intel will have some great parts for more budget builds, minus the GPU. But before I get to that, start off 2022 the right way by protecting your data, and there's no better way than with today's sponsor. Atlas VPN, one of the least expensive VPN services that not only has everything you need, but offers it even more. more. Sure, they hide your IP and encrypt your data, but they also work across all of your devices with unlimited simultaneous connections. They also help block malicious links before your data can be compromised. And with 500 plus servers across the world and 4 million current users, you know that you're getting a great service. They even have a free data breach monitoring tool to see whether your personal details have ever been leaked. And they do all of that with a 30 day money back guarantee. So don't wait, because they've partnered with me to bring you 86% off the price for three years, along with three free months. Just visit the link in the description below. Next up for today, AMD higher-ups have been doing the rounds of interviews with the press, and they've said some really interesting stuff that I've got to go over. For starters, during an interview from PC World, AMD's head of technical marketing, Robert Halleck, discussed why the 5800X is the only chip they announced with 3D vCache. In his answer, he basically says that the 5800 was the best chip for gaming, and 3D vCache helps a lot in gaming, and he even mentions uplifts as high as 40%, so 3D vCache is definitely a big performance jump. Next up is a really interesting interview with Hot Hardware, and in it, Frank Azor discussed the recently announced RX 6500 XT, specifically why it only has 4 gigabytes of GDDR6. For one, he mentions the fact that their goal was $199, but that memory prices have been skyrocketing, so fitting in 8 gigabytes would be tough to impossible. He also stated that, quote, it's also very unattractive to have 4 gigabytes if you're a crypto miner, so there's a significant benefit of going 4 gigabytes. Now, in a way he's not wrong. Mining Ethereum with 4 gigabytes isn't really a thing given the DAG size is over that. With that said, it still really sucks to see, especially when we look at performance numbers. It's only going up against an RX 570, and while it's definitely doing alright, it won't be that much better than a 580, and that came out in 2017 at a similar price. Basically, it still feels just sad. I mean, don't get me wrong, RX 580s are going for hundreds of dollars right now, so 199 isn't all that bad. Unfortunately, according to a news story from the French site Cal Kotlin, it's going to cost 299 euros over there. So once again, MSRP seems to mean nothing. And next up, while on the topic of AMD, the company's own CEO, Lisa Su, recently had a roundtable discussion from PC World and later reported by video cards. And according to her, AMD is apparently planning to do the impossible yet again. That is, try to keep AM5 as long as they did AM4. During the talks, Dr. Lisa Su stated, quote, I don't have an exact number of years, but I would say that you should expect that AM5 will be a long-lived platform as AM4 has been. Basically, AMD is planning, or at least hoping, to keep AM5 around for many years like they did with AM4. Going back to that interview with Frank Azor from Hot Hardware, he brings the point home by stating, quote, the other guys give you a socket for like a year, maybe two. So the total cost of ownership of AM4, AM5, there's just nothing that compares to it. He later states that he isn't giving anyone a commitment to the socket's number of years, but it's clear that AMD is trying to do AM4 again. 
Of course, I get why they aren't promising anything, given how tough it must have been to make AM4 last as long as it did, but it's definitely nice to hear that they're trying. AM5 will likely be a huge success. And lastly for today, I recently made some predictions based on Intel's CES event, and it looks like I was spot on. In my last video, I went over the fact that Intel showed a laptop and desktop with Q1 for their ARC GPUs back in December. Yet at CES, they only displayed a laptop and even said this. Shipping Intel ARC to leading mobile OEMs. Then the fact that they never mentioned desktop GPUs other than OEM only parts, didn't make any announcements, it just felt off. Well, Video Cards recently posted something that shows we should be worried. Just last month, the official Intel Arc website stated that Intel Arc graphics solutions were coming in Q1 2022. But if you look today, you'll notice that it just says 2022. Of course, that could just be a mistake, but the exact same change was made in another spot. So this is clearly intentional, meaning Intel's desktop GPUs likely aren't coming in the first quarter. And the fact that they don't even say Q2 could mean Intel doesn't even know. Of course, it could just be that they didn't want to say, but regardless, Q1 isn't looking very likely, and that's terrible news for Intel. Remember that both AMD and Nvidia's next-gen cards are coming this year with big performance gains. And while ARC being at 3070-3070 to 3070 Ti performance was okay before, it'll likely be dead on arrival if next-gen is right around the corner. I mean, sure, they could have a few months, but that'll be terrible performance with next-gen. Of course, if the shortage continues through the year, Intel could get lucky, but let's not forget how long Intel has delayed things in the past. So while that does it for today, are you worried about Intel or are you just excited for AMD's AM5 platform? Let me know down in the comments below. And if you liked the video, please subscribe. And as always, have a great day.